and welcome to the Knit Sibs podcast, a podcast by three yarn obsessed sisters. You can find us on Instagram at Knit Sibs. I'm Julianne. I'm Valerie. And I'm Gloria. And today we're going to talk about what's off our needles, what's on our needles, uh, what's in our dreams, and outlier crafts. So I do not have anything off my needles this week or this. It's awesome. been a few weeks, nothing at all. <laughs> How about either one of you? Um, you want to go first, Gloria? Uh, you can go first. I have one thing off my needles. It's actually off my crochet hooks. And it is a frog <laughs> headband for Halloween. That is the cutest thing ever. So I have one, two, <laughs> three of them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So my daughter, who is 22 and away at grad school right now, asked me to make one. So I went through my stash and I found yarn for this one. Um, but the white on this is dishcloth cotton. Um, and I don't like it. I didn't like working with it. It, you know, the rest of these are um, these are wool in this one. Um, so I went to Michael's after work yesterday and wound up getting black yarn and white yarn and sending my daughter pictures of what colors she wanted. So she picked out these colors. They're going to be frog and toad for Halloween. So <laughs> we'll see what the rest of the costume looks like. Um, but what I really liked about this. So you know how you have a million ends when you do like crochet, like granny square or something yep. like this, you stuff the eyeball with the ends. So oh, nice. you know, oh. it's awesome. You don't have to weave in any of the ends. So I had, you know, four eyeballs per headband with like all with eight ends uh -huh. per eyeball. And then you just kind of wrap up the yarn and put it inside the eyeball and stitch around the outside with you leave one tail and you stitch around the outside and then you use that tail to sew it on the headband. So you wind up only having to weave in two ends. That's so awesome. it was that was my favorite part of this whole thing. <laughs> I was like taking all the ends and stuffing them in the eyeball and oh, then gosh. sewing it up. So these will go in the mail on Saturday and hopefully get to them uh, before Halloween. Cause I just, I can't make it to the post office during the week with my, yeah. with my work schedule. Um, so that's the only thing I finished. Oh, and I did write down who it was, who the pattern was by. Um, so it was from an Etsy seller. Um, her name is M Gems US. It's E M G E M S U S. I couldn't find her on Instagram. There was one Instagrammer who looked like it may be her, but I didn't see um, this particular pattern. I saw like a couple of crocheted things, and I I'm not sure if it's her or not. Um, but that was her Etsy shop. Cool. And they took me like five minutes each to make. So if you're looking for a quick Halloween costume. I highly recommend it with the green t-shirt and it's done your frog. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. How about you, Glor? I have a couple things. Wow. So um, first is my Rhinebeck hat. So this is the hat that I was making for my husband for Rhinebeck. Um, it is finished. Um, this is the Musselberg pattern by Isolde Teague. Um, I used Barnyard Knits. Um, I think I have the label hit by too. It was one of her misfit colors, right? Yeah. Barnyard knits. And you can see right there, it says misfit. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was one of these like kind of mystery packages of yarn. Um, and I made the adult medium, um, but I used a size five needle. And I think if I make this pattern again with fingering weight yarn, I would use a smaller size needle because I feel like it's very loose. Very yeah. loose. I don't remember what size needle I used. Um, so I did Most make people it. are using a size three hmm. is what I'm seeing because a lot of people are making it right now. Um, and most people are using a size three with fingering weight yarn. So I do want to make it again for him. Um, I want to make him another one. I want to make myself one too, but um, I wanted to make him one with my leftover Star Wars yarns from um, Mustache. Mm -hmm. And I want to hold them double. So I want to make it like Marl's. Um, and I think if I hold them double, I'm going to use the size five needle with 
fingering weight held double. And I think it'll be um, a little bit sturdier fabric. Yeah. So, yeah. But he loves it. Um, we call it his pickle hat because <laughs> before I put the sides, you know, the one side inside. So if, if nobody's ever made one before, you just make like this big tube with decreases on the end. And then you put one side inside the other. Um, so before I put the one side inside the other, I was like, you, it's just like a big pickle right now. <laughs> so we call it his pickle hat, but he loves it. Um, but unfortunately I did not get to go to Rhinebeck. Um, so we had a little, a little medical emergency this weekend and I was not able to make it to Rhinebeck. So, um, everyone's fine, but it just, uh, kind of messed up the whole schedule. So yeah. many <laughs> hours in the emergency room, uh, but, um, but he loves it. Um, so, so I'm taking that as a win. Definitely. Yeah. Take them where you can get them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's one. And I have another one. Do I have to give a spoiler alert? I finished um, my mountain musing. You yeah. finished it? I think I, it's I, I think don't think you need done. a spoiler alert because it's yeah. over, right? It's over. Yeah, it's yeah. over. I didn't know you finished it. I finished it. Wow. So let's see. Let's go this way. So it started with the big diamond in the middle. These are the ends. Uh, different clues and the different textures. Mm -hmm. yeah. You love it? That's great. I, 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 I like it a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I wish the only thing I wish and the reason that I, I'm not like obsessed with it is um, I wish there was a little bit more contrast with some of my colors, mm. like the, um, the mosaic here, this section here, actually, it looks, it looks good on the camera it does. It's yeah. in, in person. It's not as high contrast. <laughs> it's that's just, not the, that's not the maybe I need to like put it somewhere and like stand back from it um but like mm -hmm. I just feel like like some of these sections there wasn't a lot of contrast um yeah. and I feel like my like there's a little like is it this one this section here see it looks so much better on the <laughs> in person I'm like you can't see what this is like this is supposed to be like a sunrises right. yeah. uh -huh. and like it's showing up really good on the camera <laughs> But like in person, I'm like, you, you can't see it at all, but you can. It looks good. So maybe I like it more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a lot, I haven't like, it's not blocked. I, they, I have a few ends to weave in because I use the weave and Steven method. So um, you can see I use the weave and Steven method. Um, this end here, I think this is clue five like the color changes, it's just like, can I just knit with one color for a little while <laughs> and not have to change colors? It gets, it gets very like fatiguing after a while, but you can see I used the Weave and Steven method there. Yeah. Um, so most of my ends are woven in. Um, I just, I finished it on Tuesday and it's Thursday. Um, so I haven't blocked it yet. I'll probably block it this weekend. Um, so I haven't like tried it on yet, but there were some people in the Ravelry group that were saying that they felt like it was short, like it wasn't very long, but like, I mean, I was sitting on the couch and I had it like, you know, covering my body. It's very yeah. wide. It's like, I think it's, I think when you block it, it's going to be like 24 inches wide. So it's wow. very wide. Um, so I think it's not as long. And some people were saying that, you know, like, you know, if they're very tall, they felt like it wasn't long enough. So I haven't like tried it on yet. Like I've really put it on, tied it around my neck to see how I would wear it. Like normally I do the like fold it in half and pull it through and it goes through. Like that. So, yeah. so we'll see once it's blocked, I'm sure it'll um, get bigger. Yeah. So. But yeah, so those are my, I had two finished objects. Um, and after I block it, I can send you pictures that we can put on the Instagram. Okay. People can see what it looks like all finished. Nice. So. 
So I, I posted a picture with the frog headband on my Instagram and my <laughs> husband was scrolling through the other night and he was like, why am I just seeing this now? He thought it was ridiculous looking. Uh, but you I didn't model was, them for him at all? No, I didn't model them for him. He was, um, he was recalling the seasickness glasses. He was comparing them to the seasickness glasses. <laughs> They're nothing, nothing like the seasickness glasses. <laughs> oh my goodness. We need a picture of you in those for sure. I'll send it. I have one. <laughs> um, all right. So that's what's on our needles. Um, I guess I'll go first since I didn't have anything off my needles. Um, I've been working on a muscle burra hat too. So this is going to be for our dad and it's kind of slow going. I feel like I should have gone up a needle size. So this is um, Green Mountain Spinnery yarn and it's very wooly. It's, it's a not, it's a non super wash. It's um, almost spin cycle where there's two different colors mm -hmm. wound together. Um, oh, I should take out the ball of yarn. That would be easier to see. Um, and I'm really enjoying it, but it is, it is a, let me see what, I think it's a, like a thicker DK. Yeah. It says it's DK, but it's definitely a thicker DK. And I think I'm on size six needles. I was just looking at my needles, trying to huh. figure out what size they are. Um, and it's very like your, yours looked almost floppy. Mine like could stand up on its own. It's a yeah, little, yours, yours I, yours like, dense. yeah. And I feel like mine needs to be like, mine needs to have more structure. Yeah. So mine has too much structure, yeah. um, but I think, so I'm making the like adult extra large because our dad has a big head. So it's a lot of knitting around and around and around. So I've got a ways to go before I do the crown decreases or other end decreases, but I like it so far. I, I ended one skein early um, because the skein, <clears throat> excuse me, ended in like red and then pink. And then the next skein doesn't have any red or pink. So I couldn't like um, men like meld from one to the other. So I stopped, if you can see in the middle, it's like kind of purple and gray. So I stopped in the purple. This one has purple on the outside and then I'll work into the yellow and then green. So I think I'll still have enough even with the stuff I cut off of one of them. <clears throat> so, so that's one project. And then my next one, is using the Hue Loco Hocus Pocus Hocus yarns. Pocus. And I've got it in my new bag. Did I show this off last time? No. So this was, I did a custom order with um, Happy Little Yarn, who has a podcast, which I don't know if either one of you, do either one of you watch her podcast? I think yeah. I've seen like one episode so far. So she's doing Vlogtober and it's freaking hysterical because every day she picks out a bag from her like craft room that she has no idea what the project in it is. And then yeah, opens it up. That. It's like, it's I like the totally best advent that. ever. <laughs> so I've been enjoying that. So that was a custom bag from her. But my Hue Loco, I am making the, let me check on the name of it. Half a granny square shawl by Church Mouse Yarns and Tees. And this is what I have so far. There's going to be a ton of ends to weave in, and I'm not dealing with them yet. But this is what I have so far. Nice. Looks good. So I'm enjoying it. Is it, it. just going to be a big triangle? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. This is kind of all there is to it. I don't even know if there's an edging on it. I haven't looked that far in the pattern. I'm just having fun. I'm just grabbing a mini out and, and, uh, crocheting up with it. And then I put my used minis in the bag. And then once I fill the bag with all the minis, I dump them back into the, into the project bag and start again. So is it one color per row? I'm doing one color per row. I don't That's a lot of ends. It is a lot of ends. You can see them all down here. Oh yeah. So yeah, it'll be a lot of ends, but I don't mind weaving in ends. So I'm chill with that. Not so my that's favorite. My second project. And then my third project, I I don't even know if I need a spoiler for this. So it's the Stephen West Twist and um, Turns. Wait, can we talk about your project back a little bit more? Yeah. Before we move on. So yeah. like, did you just, yeah, I love the size because I, wa I've been, um, you know, like I said, I watched a, an episode of her podcast and I've been looking, you know, I've saw her Instagram and everything. Um, but I didn't realize the bag was that big. So she makes like uh, sock size bags. 
this is her larger bag, okay. um, but still like really reasonably priced. I think yeah. it was either 35 or $40. That's great. Yeah. And that's a really good size too. That's and really she was, she bag. was wonderful. Like I, I messaged her cause she was, she had mentioned something in her stories or something like that about making a custom bag. And I said, Oh, I'd love one. Cause Whenever I go looking for bags, all I can ever find now are sock size. I can't find these slightly large, like it's not, I wouldn't put a sweater in there, at least not for me, but definitely a, a you know, three, four skein shawl would easily fit in there. Um, so she was like, yeah, sure. Do you have any idea what you want? It's like, I can send you pictures of, of fabric, but I knew that she had this Hellfire Club one or that she had made bags with it before. So I was like, if you have any of that, I'd love that. And then she sent me like pictures with other um, contrasting colors because she had a red too. And she's like, which one do you like better? I mean, lovely to work with. Absolutely okay. lovely. So yeah. Yeah. And they look like, I like the drawstring and yeah. like, drawstring yeah, and it's got really the little nice. handle. So the little handle. Can... Yeah. Yeah. All right. I but love she's it. got some nice fabrics. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's well-made. I've gotten bags before that, you know, we're a little not so well made, but hers mm -hmm. was very well made. So I'm very happy with it. All right. Stephen West time. So I don't know if I need a spoiler because I'm not even done with clue one yet. And clue three <laughs> is out. So, uh, so yeah, so spoiler, this is clue one. If you're that far behind. Yeah. Um, or if I you haven't, haven't even seen it. Most people probably already know what it looks like. So yeah, I mean, Stephen West even posted pictures on his thing with it. Yeah. So yeah, clue you one. probably know. Yeah. So this is mine. I'm knitting it out of a homespun house. I have not braided my little ladders yet because I'm using it as, a, as my incentive to finish it because I'm mm -hmm. like not braiding it till it's done. Why yeah, don't you braid good. just a little bit so people could see what it looks like braided? Like well, you can braid it live on the podcast. You think that we're going to be the first Reveal. person they've seen a Stephen Weston? Come on. <laughs> like they're all it's over still, the place. It's still exciting. It is exciting. Um, so I am enjoying it. I am finally, so I'm on like repeat 11 of 12. There's one section that repeats and I'm on 11 of 12 repeats. Um, and I finally now can kind, if, if I needed to, and I didn't have the pattern in front of me, I could knit it. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm at the point where I look at the pattern. I just kind of have to make note in my brain, like, okay, this is, we're not going to do any increases on this row, um, you know, but we're going to do pearls in the ladder section or whatever, you know, I just have to like make a little note in my brain and then I can knit the row without a problem. But it took a long time to get there. Like there's a lot of different stitch sections like in the same row. So mm -hmm. like there's no like, so the gray rows are stocking at here in the chevron section, but the first part of the chevron, you're not doing any decreases, but you are in the second part of the chevron. And then the blue part is garter Art. stitch. And then these ladders are all reverse start to stock it in. Mm -hmm. So like you get like, you're doing like garter, 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 and then you got to switch to reverse stock it in and then back to garter. And, and then you're constantly binding off and casting on. And Yeah. Which <laughs> that part doesn't annoy me as much, but it's the the constant switching of whether you're do, like having to know if you're knitting or purling or whatever, it just finally clicked in my head to where I get it. Um, but it was kind of annoying. All right. So there's one part braided for you, Val. Ooh, look how pretty. I got these pretty knit stitches, big, huge knit stitches running down. So, okay. so I, I'm enjoying it a lot. I saw clue two and was still kind of like, you know, pretty excited about it saw clue three <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, what is that man doing? He's bonkers no no. <laughs> he is. He's like banane. But um, but you know, it's all gonna turn out wonderful in the end. Yeah. And we're all gonna be like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Well, no, probably not, but yeah. <laughs> I haven't even cast mine on yet. So yeah. I'm even further behind. Should I yeah, tell I don't it, it it stresses me out being behind though. That's one of the reasons I don't like make alongs. So, well, to be honest, uh, my yarn did not arrive until the day before clue two came out. So not that far behind, but I'm still like clue three is out and I'm nowhere near that. And that's annoying me, 
but it looks like clue three is not going to be too much knitting, I hope. Um, so maybe I can catch up. Yeah, well, clue three looks a lot smaller than clues one and two, but I'm on the Stephen West like Facebook group and somebody posted, I wonder if we're going to get like a clue two, clue three, part two at mm -hmm. some point this week. They said that would no. be a twist. I don't think <laughs> He's so. Done he, He's he done it before. He put in his, um, he put in like his little newsletter thing that goes out with the clues that this was the penultimate clue, meaning there's only one more. So that doesn't mean there can't be a part two. I guess so. Clue three. I guess so. Yeah. But I'm Should wondering I... if clue three, uh, I don't Should know. Should I, I show mine? Talk. Yeah. <laughs> That's how far I am. <laughs> we but were like, very similar in colors. Yes, yes. Yours is darker though. Yeah. Yours is darker. Um, mine is Miss Babs. Um, it was one of the kits that they had on their website. Um, I started mine before you. So the clue came out on like a Thursday. Clue one came out on a Thursday. I think I started it the next Monday. Um, just because I was trying to finish my mountain musings. I wanted to finish that before I started this. Um, so that's why I'm behind, but I don't feel bad being behind. Um, I know there's a lot of people who are even further behind than I am. Um, yeah. <laughs> and like I, last year I finished it in like February. <laughs> yeah. So I really don't mind being behind. People are still like super excited about it when you finish it in February. So, yeah. um, I don't mind. I like I'm to really... get what? I like to get a new clue and be able to start on it right away when I'm super excited about it. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's um, what annoys me the most. I'm really, this is going to take forever. Like it takes me two. hours. It took me an hour to do like one stripe, Yeah, which is half a repeat. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's going to take forever to do, but whatever, um, it'll get done eventually. Um, What's but I'm your... super excited to add in my accent color what's your accent a, color I was just gonna say why don't you hold yeah it up? mine is like a this like a rusty color <laughs> we have matching skein socks <laughs> <laughs> mine is a yeah coppery rust mine's a yeah. bit more golden than yours I think yeah mine's a little more orange yeah so I'm but we're totally excited. gonna match when we wear them together Glor yep twinsies <laughs> um yeah but that like there's been a lot of people like who really don't like it I know and I don't get like last year's like I could see really not liking that was like I off loved the wall. last year's I loved last year's yeah like um, I it worked well we enjoyed color. every part of it like the yeah it worked well weird. in your colors the shrimps were weird in the beginning but then it was like they're kind of really cool. Like I'd never yeah. did anything with like those big loops and the big space, like big holes yeah. in things. I had never done that before. Um, so I like genuinely enjoyed every part of last year's. Yeah. Um, but like clue two came out and people were like, uh-uh, no way. I'm done ripping it out. Like yeah, not I don't going get that. any further. Yeah. They no. don't, they don't trust him. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't Val, know. do you have your yarn? Do you want to share what colors you're using? No, I didn't bring it upstairs. Okay. But it's light gray, dark gray, and I have a green and a yellow. And I was fairly confident before I saw any of the clues that I would use the yellow, but now I'm thinking I might use the green. Yeah. I could see that. I also could do so I have two green, one yellow, two light gray, two dark gray. So I could do the like green gray. And then my accent, another gray. I, I've got options. Yeah. Glory, you watch um, Knit All the Yarn, right? With Lisa? Yes. So she's doing two grays two and, gray a yellow. and a yellow. Uh -huh. um, and Val, I don't think you'd like it. I think green would be better. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking if you do the dark green, the green as your main color, dark gray as your contrast color, and the light gray as light gray as my count as my accent, yeah. I think no, he so. says to use for your contrast color to use a lighter one if you have it because that's the one you're going to cable in. 
Yeah, but I don't think it matters. I think I don't think gray, they're going to show up as well with the dark. I think I think the I think the dark gray and the material the the fiber, I think it's going to look fine. Cables okay. are going to look fine, and I think the, I don't think so. I think no, <laughs> I, cause, and cause, well, because I think Clue Two, with the um, the wait, Clue Two, Clue Two is the main color and the accent color. Yeah. And then the cabling is done. The cable part of Clue 2 is in the contrast color. So maybe, because I think Clue 2 would look cool with the dark gray and the light gray. Yeah. All right. So at this point, I'm not casting mine on until yeah. everything is released. So I could really decide, you know, once I see what the full picture is right. and right. place my colors in a way that. I like. Yeah, but I think I think the cables would look fine in, in the, with dark the darker. Color? Yeah, I'm yeah, because like, like if dark... both of your if both of your main color and contrast color are a little bit darker, I think it's gonna be fine. So my dark gray isn't like almost black, right? Um, you know, so it's still a lighter dark gray, and my dark green also isn't like super dark. So nothing nothing is super dark to begin with. Mm -hmm. right. um, so and I it's think kind of like lot. it's kind of shiny mm -hmm. your yarn so I think yeah, my yarn has some silk in it so yeah, it's like so I think the shiny. cables will show up just fine mm -hmm. um, yeah we'll see Definitely. I'm not making it because I think because I think that light gray would look cool as the like pop yeah as the accent yeah. I'll decide once I see the full thing because at this point I'm not going to get to it yeah um until the next clue is released anyway right or until the whole thing is done yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So all were right. you done with what's on your needles, Julie? Yeah, that was it for me. All right. So Gloria, do you want to finish since you showed your, uh, um, yeah, I have one other thing, um, that I wanted to show. Um, so I did show this previously, um, and I kind of picked it up just because I needed, um, like it's just garter stitch. So I needed something that was like, just kind of easy. Yeah. um after you know all the brain power of patterns and stuff so i have been working on my garter marler cardigan <laughs> and i have split for the sleeves nice so nice i split for guy. the sleeves here i have a couple inches um are you still just using row one minis yep and you're getting that wide of a stripe from the row one that's pretty awesome yep yeah they got kind of you can see they got kind of um thinner here yeah. because you know it was before i split for the sleeve so it was getting longer the rows were getting longer yeah. um but yeah after i split for the sleeves i'm getting some good a good amount of rows yeah but i feel like i have a lot that is switching on the wrong side so i'm getting a lot of like ends i'm gonna have to weave in because i'm doing the steve the weave and steve in again here yeah. Um, so on the right side, I can weave them in, yeah. but on the wrong side, I can't. Um, so I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm ending up with a lot that I'm going to have to weave in. I have had a couple times where I lost yarn chicken, um, and I have magic knotted, um, the next skein in just because, but so that's the question I have is if I run out like mid row, can I just switch color mid row and then just weave sure. in the ends mid row Absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah so I think I might do that instead of magic knotting because I'm I don't know about magic knot in a garment um like I'm totally fine with it in like a blanket or something but yeah in a garment I think I I don't want to do that yeah um, but I could put it on sure <laughs> I put it on the other day and I was like dancing around the living room and my husband's playing video games and he was not impressed <laughs> um, but I figured you guys would like it. Yes. You've come to the right place to be impressed by it. <laughs> so it looks really small when I hold it up, but then when I put it on, it fits. So you could stop it right there and call it a bolero and it's a finished yeah. garment. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's so, really good. How long will the sleeves be? The sleeves are full length. Okay. 
Um, and they have, I'm going to use the black that's in the ribbing on the top here. That was like a full skein. So okay. I'm going to use that for the ribbing on the cuffs, for the ribbing on the bottom. And there's going to be a button band. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit, you know, it's going to meet button in the band and button. Yeah. So I'm doing, um, I'm doing size one. I'm doing the small size, um, which it's like a 37 bust. Um, and he said like three inches of positive ease. So um, that should be fine. And then I think once the button band is on there, um, it'll be, it'll close. Yeah. But like my concern is like, what's gonna happen when it gets to like the hips because there's no like shaping yeah. at all. So I'm just concerned that like the hip portion is gonna be a little bit tighter down there, um, but it will have the ribbed, it will have ribbing on the bottom. Yeah. Um, but it says to do 10 inches from the underarm. Mm -hmm. um, that seems, I feel like, like my other cardigan was 15 inches from the underarm. Yeah. But I've heard like yoke gives more length so you don't have to do as much length on the body. Well so. I think probably the fact it's garter, it's going to grow a lot when you block it. Yeah. So that might be why it's not as long. Right. So we'll see, you know, when I get there, I might add a little bit of length to it. Um, yeah. But I think it's super cute. Um, yeah. I'm enjoying knitting it. Um, for some reason, changing colors on this doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> <laughs> We're changing colors on mountain musings. I was like, I do not want to change color ever again. Um, <laughs> But I think it's really cute. Like it is. I think it's coming out really good. I'm really excited. So. And it's a great way to use up the minis. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> my husband wasn't impressed. So well, we are. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then like I have like the colors aren't showing up very well, obviously, because they're all like muted and marled together. But like I think this stripe right here is my favorite. Like yeah. it's got like this greenish color in it and like a, like a mauve color and like held together. So like I'm picking out like color combinations and I'm like, where do I want it to be on the, on the sweater? Like the certain specific color and specific <laughs> color combination. So I'm just nervous when I get to the sleeves. Cause I think that's going to be a mess, but yeah, you'll do it fine. Are you we'll in? Is this all the same dyer right now? Or are you mixing together dyer? No, I'm mixing together. Yeah. And I have about, I think I have six months right now. Um, and I'm just mixing them all together. But one is like Barnyard Knits. One is Megs & Co. Um, there's the one I just got um, this month is A Thousand Ravens, I think it's called. And they're from New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be at that New England fiber festival in, yeah in in november so yeah um so yeah i love it so far um i think it's coming out good so we'll see what happens it's beautiful thank you so anything else or is that it that's it okay val what's been on your needles um i have my mountain musings which i did not finish <laughs> um but i am obsessed with mine <laughs> so <laughs> Um, my colors actually kind of remind me of what you're wearing right now, Julie. Um, the mosaic looks like it. Yeah. Um, so I'm on clue. There were, how many clues were there all together? Six or five? Six. 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 So I'm on clue five right now. So on clue five, you're doing this like, and actually you see, this is my mosaic section. Yeah. See how, like, really? how much it yeah. stands out. It does. So you go from knitting this like arrow shape to only working on one side of the arrow at a time. So I'm on the first side right now where we're changing colors pretty quickly. So I still have the other side to do and that'll be the end of clue five. And then clue six, I'll come back to the other end. But mine, I feel like mine is looks longer than yours did. You know, I still have, was there much after when you went back to clue six was it just the ends or did you go this way a little bit? No, you just fill in the triangle. The okay. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like mine is kind of long. You're a looser knitter than Gloria too. So yeah. 
Although this, so this that I'm wearing right now, this is just beachy. So this was her mystery knit along last year. That's and it's huge. longer. Yeah. Yeah. Because she did like this bias thing on the ends and that gives you like all that extra length. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm but like the it, yeah. garden, the garden variety one, which was the year before, um, that one wasn't very long either. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, it's long enough, you know, it's long enough. I can wrap it around and, you know, um, so I think when I block it, it'll come out bigger. Yeah. yeah, I think this is going to be and it is it is wide. Yeah. So I think, yeah, when I block it, I think it's going to be plenty long. And I think it'll be plenty long to wrap around myself. So this was a, um, a Miss Babs kit. And I am so incredibly happy with the colors. I absolutely love it. The only thing is that my um, my Just Beachy was a different fiber content. It has some cashmere in it and it's a lot drapier. So in comparison, this one feels a little bit stiff. So we'll see what it's like after I block it, if it like loosens and softens up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. Yeah. Nice. So that's my first thing. So I have only one other thing that I'm really actively looking at, uh, working on. I have project bags upon project bags um, piled up all over my house that um, I haven't really worked on, but this is one that I've been working on. So I just, this is a sock. It's the, it's called the Simple Skype Sock, S-K-Y-P by Adrian Koo. And it's a free pattern. Um, so it's really like a, a six by two rib. And then you do a little like fancy yarn over thing in the, the middle of the like uh, stockinette section of the rib. So this is a sock for my friends that Julianne uh, offered that I would knit socks for. <laughs> so, Very nice. So, nice. <laughs> so Julie sent me the, the yarn and I've been working on it. Um, we went up to visit my son this past weekend and we hit a whole bunch of traffic and I figured out that I, so I get violently car sick, but I figured out that I could knit these without looking. I've knit this. This is like my version of a vanilla sock. I've knit like 10 pairs of these already. Um, so I can knit this in the car without looking as long as we are going straight at a consistent speed. So mm -hmm. if there are lots of turns. Just if put we're your seasick glasses on. <laughs> they, they were an utter failure. Um, so I was able to get a, a decent amount of this. This is all car knitting. Um, so I did this in the car on the way there and on the way back. Um, we went up to Niagara Falls from his apartment. Um, so I did a little bit of knitting on the way there. On the way back, I didn't. Um, and then some knitting on the way home. There, there was a lot of traffic, so I couldn't do as much knitting as I would have liked. But uh, yeah. look at this. Look. Yeah. What of my first? That's like three months of knitting progress for you normally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I knit other things, but socks take me four ever mm -hmm. um so the yarn is um beach bum yarn and the color is tulips and margaritas um and it's a superwash merino nylon blend and this is the that's the label i don't think she's dying anymore no that's a mm -hmm. shame um so i i will say though the, co the colors are bleeding um so i'm gonna have to rinse the yarn. Um, it seems more like that greenish color. Like I'll, after I'm knitting for a while, I'll get like, my fingers will get like blue and green. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's blue most is, from, from our little dye adventures, bright blues are really hard or they take a very, very, very long time to exhaust. So mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to soak it. Um, I know vinegar is something people recommend, but I didn't want it to smell like vinegar. So I ordered um, a package of citric acid um, and I'll give that a try. Well, you should have let me know. I have so much of it. I could have just sent you a. Bag. Well, I needed, I needed to place an Amazon order anyway, because my dermatologist has told me it's time to increase my daily moisturizer from an SPF 15 to an SPF 30. Um, so I needed to order a stronger moisturizer to yeah. begin with. So, and I don't really, there's not a lot of selection in yeah. like Target where I normally go. So I just ordered it from Amazon. Yeah. Citric acid. Um, and then I've got other like little things that I'm working on. I have those socks that I've been doing like another row here or there, um, but I've talked about them twice already. So I did not bring them up to show. Okay. That's all my on my needles that I'm talking about today. All right. 
Um, so next up is in our dreams. Um, Gloria, you want to go first? Sure. Um, I have one thing with me. So last time we recorded, um, Julie was looking for a pattern to use with her minis. Um, and, and something popped up on my Instagram that I thought would be perfect for Julie's minis. Um, she didn't agree, but <laughs> <laughs> I've decided that I want to make this the oleo cowl. Um, so it is a garter stitch marled cowl. And I was like, perfect. <laughs> you got to wear Love it with it. your sweater and you can be yeah. all over marled. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then I started looking at the pattern and it is three strands of yarn held together. And I was nice. like, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm upping my moral content here. Um, so I have, Julie had gotten us for Christmas, um, this set of, um, mini skeins of Koigu, um, pencil box, right? Skeins. Was it a pencil box? No, it, it was like a on like a cable. Oh, that's right. That's right. On yeah. like a, like a zip tie almost. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Val had made a cowl out of it, like around Christmas time, right after Christmas. Um, I'm still holding on to mine. So I have this set of um, Koigu minis. Um, and then I had a bunch of um, like partial skeins that I was saving for like heels and toes and cuffs contrasts for socks. Um, but I was, then I looked at the colors and I was like, these colors go perfectly with my minis. Um, nice. and then I was like, then I'm going to have all these leftovers from my mountain musings, um, which I forgot to mention my mountain musings yarn was lavender loon. Um, and my colors was the set I got was the drift away set. Um, so then I had all those colors and those are like much lighter colors. So I figured like they'd marl in really nice. Um, so then I had to finish my mountain musings so I could have the leftovers and my mini skeins were bigger than the Miss Bab. So I have a lot more left over, um, than Val will, um, I'm getting like really low on some yeah, of my colors. Mine were like, like 50 gram skeins. Like I had like 200 yards of my contrast mm -hmm. colors. Um, so I had a lot left over. Um, so I was like, perfect. I have three strands that I can do with my cowl. So um, it's been in my dreams since I found this pattern um, and I got a little impatient and I started it yesterday. <laughs> it's not even in your dreams. It's on your needles. It's on it's your not, needles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, but then I would have, I mean, I, I always have things in my dreams, but um, this was, I was trying to save it for when we recorded, but then I got a little impatient yesterday. Yeah. So I started it and Look at how big those needles are. I know they're size 11. Julie sent me um, her 16 inch size 11 because I'm trying not to buy any new needles right now. Um, so Julie's loaning me her needles and um, I'm holding like the blue is the Koigu. I have a pink that was a like partial leftover skein and there's like a light brown in there. That's from my mountain musings. So essentially you make this big tube and then you turn it inside out and you join it together and you get the garter. Nice. So you knit it, it's all just knit. Yeah. So it's really reverse stockinette. Essentially, yeah. 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 Um, but so these are, now three strands of yarn, it's a little much to handle. Yeah. Um, but these are my Koigu minis. So they're like these blues and purples and, you know, teals and maroon colors, um, greens in there. I have to cut the zip tie to get it off. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to keep them in the same order. So like I, I put a rubber band on there <laughs> so they wouldn't all just fall off because I'm trying to keep them in this order. They, they're they a them. nice little fade there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just show you like a a few of my contrasty colors that I have. Um, so like these were the colors that I had for contrast, like heels and cuffs and toes and everything. So yep. these were on my shelf and like this was on the shelf right under it. And I was like, wait a minute, like these go <laughs> perfect together. Um, and then I'm adding in, you know, some of the lighter colors 
from my mounts and musings then to kind of soften it all up. Yeah. So, um, I think it looks fabulous so far. Um, so my question to you guys is. You're freezing. Time. Sorry, say, say that again. You froze for a second. Okay. Okay. So my question for you guys is, I want to change one color at a time, you know, to get the marled effect. Um, yeah. And the Koigu minis, of course, are the smallest one. And I have 12 colors. The cowl I'm supposed to make about 23 and a half inches long before I join it together. Should I just do two inches per mini color? Or should I just use it up until it's gone and then change color? Which, what would you do? So do you wanna use the entire set of, you wanna use all of the colors in the Koi glue? I mean, I would like to. So and if I you wanna use all of the colors, I would do two inches, but so then, then you're gonna have like- Per color. Yeah, you're gonna have leftovers and that's- She's then making you're gonna a granny stripe blanket. Awesome. blanket. She can put right. them in there. Right. That's what my husband said to me. He's like, well, then what are you going to do with the leftovers? I was like, put it in my blanket. Yeah. Like, or I, if this comes out good, I want to make one for one of my coworkers. Mm -hmm. So um, the one I make for them is probably going to be like much scrappier. Yeah. Um, and not quite as like organized as this one I think will be. Um, so I can always use those little mini leftover bits in yeah. a more scrappy version. Nice. So, so you would do two inches and you would want to use every single color. Because then I was like, maybe I can use it all up and then it'll be longer than 24 inches. And maybe I could wrap it around twice. And Andrew was like, well, if it's not long enough, then it's not going to wrap around twice. And you don't want to run the risk well, of it not being Well, then long you just add all the colors in. Yeah. Make it long enough. But well, it, is, it looks like it's going to be super bulky yeah. to begin with. Because it's now it's three strands in a tube that's doubled so you've got it's going to be really thick yeah so you might not want it wrapped double right yeah because it's just going to be like you know you just make the tube join it yeah put it over your head like that's it mm -hmm. so you don't want right, it too so much. i'll just do i'll do two inches per mini skein i bet you're probably not even going to use half a mini skein doing two inches no i think i'm um, make two of them where is it? I feel like I... I'm almost at two inches and this is what I have left. Okay. So I I didn't weigh this one. It was like falling apart when I took it yeah. off. And I was like on my way out the door in the morning. And I was like, I want to get like two rows done. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't weigh it, but like, it's almost, it's almost done. Yeah. yeah. So my dream has become a reality and I'm making a super mild cowl. <laughs> nice. Oh boy. Anything else in your dreams? That's well, well, I will say since I finished my mountain musings, I now have a free set of size five needles. Mm. So I'm, I have a couple tops that I want to make that call for a size five needle. So I'm going to gauge swatch on the size five and see if I get gauge and then I might have another on the needles next week. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. So, yeah. That's All right, it. Val, what's in your dreams? All right. So I have two things. Um, I ordered from Hugh Loco. You know, I'm obsessed with her as well. Um, I ordered, let's see if you could see that. No. Nope. Hold on. Just tell me. I'll put a picture in. It's the November um, Flora set. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's all like pinks and creams, if you could see. So it's a set of minis. I ordered, I think I ordered the Phyllis sock instead of the Merino sock. So I think it's a two ply instead okay. of a four ply. Um, and I'm super excited to get that. It was a pre-order, so I don't have it yet. Hopefully it'll come soon. And I'm trying to pick out a pattern for it. And I need to look at the Volcano Trail cowl and see if there's enough yarn for that. So did you guys both make that? Yeah. I oh, haven't I made, made it. it. I haven't made it yet. But when I went to Liftbridge Yarns, mm -hmm. they had a sample there that was made out of Spun Right Round. Spun Right Round. Yeah. yeah. I saw that. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's 
that's what I hope to plan to make with my spun right round minis. And then I have like, you know, I have more spun right rounds. So like if I need to add more colors in, I have other like full skeins of spun right round. So once I make whatever I'm making with that, I can use the leftovers in my volcano trail if, it, if the mini set is not enough. I used leftover like scrap yarn. So I didn't use mini skeins. I don't, I don't remember how much, I think it was called for like three full skeins of yarn, but you didn't use all of it. So I don't quite remember. So the one that I ordered, the set that I ordered, it's 10 minis and it's 90 yards per mini. So it's 900 yards, um, which is like two full, not even two full skeins or two it's full more skeins. Than more than two. A little more than two full skeins. And you said it calls for three with leftover? It calls for three with leftover. Like, I feel like you start with one color and then you- I thought it was that, four. I thought it was four colors. But they maybe, were I don't remember. Had. I don't remember. So last year, I did last year get the November mini set and I made the juniper cowl yeah. and I felt like I wanted it to be a little bit bigger. So yeah. I should have added um, some yarn into that. So I just, I don't want it to be too small. And I feel like Volcano Trail- uses more yarn than the juniper but I don't know the juniper was crochet and crochet like eats yarn I don't know so it might be <laughs> it well might be just be prepared to if you need to supplement it like you Maybe know if you have a order... partial if you have partial skeins of anything like like your miss babs the your main color of the mountain musings you that might work well it's like it's like a creamy off-white color like that might blend in well with it so just you know, keep some partial skeins around in case you need something to supplement it with. We'll see when it comes. I'll play with it. Um, so then the other thing is I went to Lithbridge Yarn. Um, I was knitting the sock that I showed you in the car on the way up to Rochester. And I was telling my husband, so we were getting up there. My son was going to be at work. Um, he's on co-op this semester, so he's not taking classes. Um, he was getting off work at like 4.30 or 5 o'clock. And we were going to get up there before then. So I was like, I think we could go to the yarn store um before we go check in the hotel like before we even go see our kid um and he wasn't like super on board with that plan and then I broke a knitting needle uh, so it became an emergency so we had to go to the the yarn store um before checking in the hotel otherwise I would have been very cranky so yeah, yeah. they are lovely they're in their new spot um I don't even know who works there and who was just the customer, but they were all, <laughs> they were all incredible. A it's woman, hard to tell because they're just like sitting there knitting and it's yeah. like, hey, <laughs> she's like referring to with other, me? <laughs> <laughs> the woman like gave me a whole tour of the shop. She showed me who the local dyers were. Um, she's her and another woman were who I think might be her daughter. Her name is like Ryan or Reagan or something like that. Wow. We're both knitting sweaters. Uh, the, the woman who was sitting at the table knitting the sweater with the woman who seems to be the owner of the shop does not gauge swatch. So she's my, you know, spirit sister. Yeah. Um, well, can I tell you when I was there, they were all knitting like love note sweaters. And now I like need to knit a love note sweater. <laughs> they were awesome. So I had had a conversation with my sister-in-law on the drive up. Um, and I was talking about what to, I was looking for a gift for her 15 year old son. Um, and she gave me an idea and I was like, all right, cool. That's what I'll do. And she was like, you know what, actually, can you knit him a hat? Like, I'd rather you do something personal. Um, can you knit him a hat? I was like, well, I'm going to the yarn store. So if anything, if I see a skinny yarn that looks like him, I'll pick it up. So he's very fair. He's got very fair skin. He's got very light blonde hair and light blue eyes. And I wound up with Dr. Amp from spun right round. It's like a turquoise and gray. Um, and I think I thought it would look really good on him. Um, you know, being fair. Yeah. Um, and my husband really likes it too. So if it doesn't work out for my nephew, <laughs> um, I could make it for my husband. So she's showing me the wall of spun right round and she's, and I said, you know, I want to make it's a amazing, hat. amazing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I want to make a hat for a 15 year old. And she picks up the sample of the Muscleboro hat, a Muscleboro hat. And I was like, oh, I've made two of those already. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was showing me some other stuff and she was explaining like what Cormo is and what Targi is. And I was like, oh, I'm a spinner. I'm familiar with these. Uh -huh. Like she was just so excited to to <clears throat> have like a new customer in the yarn in the yarn store that's like 
as excited about the yarn as she is. Yeah. So I also wound up with Megs and Cow. So this is like a light green and it has some of this like purpley on it. Mm -hmm. And then I also wound up with um, Urban Girl yarns. Did you see that when you were there? That, so somehow, uh, like these are kind of the same color palette, but they're different. So Mexican is Urban Girl, a uh, mother local one to them? Not local to them. It's Virginia, but okay. she, so she's another small dyer, but she's yeah. not local to them. I've never heard of her, but it looks beautiful. Yeah, it is merino, superwash, merino, nylon, and mohair. Um, so mm -hmm. even though these two are kind of similar to each other, they're very different than anything I already have yeah. in my stash. So I thought, you know, I, maybe this could be another hat. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I got two colors that were like almost identical from two <laughs> different, um, dyers, but I am thinking this, you know, it'll be a gift, a hat for someone else. Um, she also had another yarn that was um, like a Targi that was in the same section. It was Targi Merino, maybe, or Targi <laughs> Nylon or something like that. God bless you. Okay, you. Um, and I was also super excited about that, but I, I limited myself to just the three, the three things of yarn and I had to get new needles. So I'm I shocked you didn't get a spun right round mini set because oh, I, I was so tempted. in person. So I told, I told George, we pull into the parking lot and I was like you can wait in the car if you want you don't have to come in with me <laughs> and, he's like, no, in. and he's like following me around the store um and they're like oh there's a coffee shop that's open until like, whatever four o'clock I was like they're trying to get rid of you um, <laughs> like, the yarn and as we're walking out I was like I wish you hadn't have witnessed that like, I <laughs> like so I think he I think he hovered around because he knew I would like rein in my spending yeah um, I was very tempted by that <laughs> But, oh, but at that point, I already knew that I had, um, God bless you, I already knew that I had the few local November set. I oh, have gosh. an Advent set, set coming, and I think I have two mini sets from Barnyard Knits um, sitting in my chest that I haven't done anything with yet. You from Barnyard Knits? I definitely have, oh, and I have two, I, I have two, like, five skein mini sets from Wicked Knitter, too. Um so I definitely have the seaside or sea, yep. sea, uh, sea yeah. something okay. from Barnyard. And I feel like I have another, I feel like I have another. Well, you one. had the suc succulent one, but you use that. I use that for um, a mystery knit along. Yeah. I, nice it really wasn't the right yarn for, I wasn't happy with it. Um, all right. So that's all of my, in my dreams. Nice. How about you, Julie? Um, I'm going to see if I can share pictures to show my, in my dreams. Okay. I don't know if it's going to work. So my first in my dream, can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. My first in my dream <clears throat> is the Whidbey sweater by Woolen Pine. Oh, I love it. <clears throat> so this was a pre-order <laughs> that just today, today's Thursday, October 20th, and it was just released today. I've been seeing that everywhere. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think I want to make great. the men's version though, like the woman's pattern so that I can get like the, the bust and everything, but I want to do the weaving in like the men's. So I think- it is like a, you knit the pattern and then you weave through these yeah. colors. Yeah, so someone I, had a video of it on their, their stories or a reel or something. It looks- Oh, really? Awful. I think Wool yeah. I think Wool and Pine had it. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Um. So I want to do the one that that man is wearing where it's just on the shoulders because I have a feeling if it's like on my chest and stuff, like I am the biggest klutz in the world like it's just going to get stuck on everything so I feel like and I like the look of it on the shoulders better either that or I like the little little kid one where it was just a body with no sleeves so mm -hmm. I'm going to do one of them either and so I saw this pattern and we were texting about it when it, they showed when they showed the pictures uh -huh. and they don't like it's I think it's spun right round yarn um that it's made they, with they had um I don't know if it's you, I think it is. Yeah. Cause I think they had like a kit. Well, not a kit mini sets you could get for the color work part. And right. then you buy solid skeins for the rest of right. it. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, so then like spun right round was showing all like combinations, uh -huh. like potential combinations, but not official kits. Yeah. And I texted Julie and I said, thank God it's not a kit because <laughs> I would hundred percent buy it today yep. if it was an actual kit. Yeah, but if I, I have to pick my own colors, it's not happening. Yep. If it was a kit, 
it would be in my cart and the money would be out of my account <laughs> and I'd probably be showing it right now but yeah. um yeah I would yeah, I, I am going 100% bought it I I really want to make it but I'm really going to try and wait until like I'm ready to make it to buy yarn because I have so much other yarn. I really want to start working through it. Really want to get my stash down a bit. So I really don't need to buy a sweater's worth. It's going in my queue. I already bought the pattern. <clears throat> so hopefully one day I'll get to it. We'll see. All right. So here's my next thing. <clears throat> I don't know how this is going to work for the recording, whether this is going to show up well or not. We'll find out. Okay. Um, so I just signed up to do a core, a class. So I live like five minutes away from the um, Fiber Festival of New England at the Big E in Massachusetts. Um, and they had, and I've never taken classes there, but I saw these, <clears throat> the woman who runs these does um, like caning classes and stuff like that, which I've always wanted to do. Our grandfather did caning and I really want to learn how to do it. It just was something that I've always been interested in but I've never been able to get to one of her classes. So now she's doing this one, she's doing one with caning or like pa paper rush, I think she calls it. Um, but it's, my son has a hockey game that day. So um, this one is on Sunday. He doesn't have a hockey game so far that I know of. So I signed up for this one and it's basically the same techniques as caning a chair, but it's using this corded wool. Hmm. So um, I'm really excited. Cool. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be like at all, but. I'm and you'll excited. have a useful object at the end of it. Exactly. Like, and it, I think it was like $55 for the class and then like $40 for materials or something like that. That's it's like 90 bad. bucks. Oh. Like I would yeah. spend that on sock yarn, but this one I'm like, I'm actually going to have uh, come home with an object, which is. Right. Well, I tell my husband all the time. I said, aren't you impressed that I'm making clothing out of a piece of string? Yeah, like, I took a piece of string and I am making a piece of clothing <laughs> out of it. Yep. It's amazing. All right. So they this think, is they think I work magic at work. Like when I talk about my knitting or I wear something that I knit, like they think it's just like the most magic thing in the world. <laughs> it really is. It is. All right. This is the last thing in my dreams. Okay. So I haven't seen that. Yeah. So this is the Vincent's Cowl by Kendra Castillo. And um I watched the, oh gosh, I forgot the name of it. Oh, that's terrible. The Knitting the Stash podcast. <laughs> and um, <laughs> she does this yarn collection once a year out of local, or I think it's, I think it's always local sheep. Um, and she gets the sheep and has it milled and, or gets the wool and has it milled and makes these like boutique collections of yarn. And every time she does that, she releases two or three patterns with the yarn. So this is this this is one of this year's patterns, and it's called Vincent's Cowl, and it's you know a cable worked up the side with this ribbing. And <clears throat> my son really likes cowls. He does not like scarves and stuff like that, but he likes a cowl. And he's he's a scout. He's a Boy Scout, and he's been doing a lot of outdoor, cold weather things lately. Um, and he has one cowl um, that I had made and he stole. Um, but it's, I thought it would be nice to make him his own cowl and a bit more manly looking than the one that he stole from me. So, um, so I think I'm going to make this for him and I might make one for my husband as well. Cause he does, um, like the snow blowing and stuff and you don't want a big scarf on when you're doing that. So, um, that's a great idea. Yeah. So, so, so are you going to try to get the yarn or I'm going to see what I have in my stash first. I would love to get some of her yarn. I would love to support her. Um, I think what she's doing is wonderful, um, but I need to see if I have stuff. Like I have a, there was a local dyer by me that did all natural dyeing, like all plant-based dyeing and with all non-superwash yarn. So I want to definitely do it in a non-superwash because I don't want it to get wet and soaking. I want it to, you know, the water to flow off of it. Um, so if I have any of her yarn, then I think I'm going to use that because she did very, like with the natural based dyeing, a lot of times it's very light. So it's not an overpowering pink or anything like that. You know, they're very light natural colors. So I think that would work well for the boys. So if I don't have any of that, then I might buy some of her yarn if there's any available. I mean, it's a very small batches, so I don't think that there's 
a lot on hand. I don't know though. So, so that's what's in my dreams. That would be good to do with um, hand spun from that fleece we got at Rhinebeck a couple of years ago. So would a sweater. I really yeah. want to make a sweater out of it, but I, I really want to start... spin it and like do spin something, it. do something with it. You know, I was thinking the other day, so, you know, obviously me and Val weren't planning on going to Rhinebeck this year. It was just Gloria. <clears throat> and I was like, I should set myself a goal that I can't go to Rhinebeck until I at least spin that fleece. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's I think, silly. <laughs> I want to, I really want to do it. Yeah. Um, I don't, my daughter was doing something in the closet where it's stored and knocked it over. And it was like on the ground yesterday. And I was like, it's a sign. I need to start spinning it. Yeah. So it's well, literally one, jumping out at you. It is. I have one more breed of fiber to spin for my shift cowl. If mm -hmm. I do just the three colors, because I already have two. Um, so I really want to get that spun. And then I, I do want to work on that fleece a little bit. I have to spin for my shift. Um, I have all the yarn pulled out I, or the fiber pulled out. I just haven't taken my wheel out. Like yeah. it, it's for me, I have to rearrange all the furniture in the den and me too. And my, I keep yeah. my wheel in a case in the basement and yeah. it's a pain in the butt. I, I need a bigger house. That's what the problem is. Well, I just need, so I have a, um, building outside of my house in the backyard, which the people who lived here before us had like a hot tub in and it's got these great, like double, um, sliding glass doors that look out on a field behind our house. And I just need to turn that into a craft studio, but that you know, we live in the country, so it's definitely overrun with mice right now. I'm sure like we just use it for, for storage of our old furniture that didn't fit in this house. Um, so we'd need to like, you know, mouse proof it and figure out electricity. Cause I know it it's can have it. electricity, <laughs> but I'm not sure if I want to turn it on right now or if it's going to start a fire. So, um, you know, it would need some serious work. Um, but also that space would be awesome to be a dye dungeon. So mm -hmm. a studio, how awesome studio, would that be? And then you could sell your stuff. It could be like a little yarn store. No, I don't want to yarn, make it a yarn store. Yarn shack. <laughs> I'm not doing yes, open studios in my backyard, <laughs> like <laughs> walk through the mud and <laughs> come in here, but I, it would no, be it awesome be an, to set up. It could be an online store. But it could be an online store. Yeah. Yes. That's where you photograph everything. Yes. Yes. So, um, yeah, so that's all that's in my dreams. Um, I think everyone did there in their dreams, right? So, um, anyone, Val, do you have any outlier stuff? Um, so only if purchasing fiber counts as an outlier craft, because I've been doing a lot of that lately. It's an outlier stashing. So yeah. go ahead. So I ordered, um, all right, let me move this. So this was my, these were the three that I got at Liftbridge. Uh-huh. And then Wicked Knitter had a sale. <laughs> <laughs> so this is called Sea of Gold. <laughs> this is Sunken Treasure. My daughter picked this one out. It's got like gold also. It's very, actually, it, this might be the same yarn. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, this one is called Cold as Ice. It's like a light blue and gray. Nice. Uh, this one is called Tarnish. You can see how it's like kind that. of like, you know, it looks like something tarnished. Mm -hmm. And this one is called Reef. And and then Polka Dot Creek had a style. <laughs> I love Polka Dot Creek. <laughs> Me too. I like love them right now. I've started watching their podcast ever since you said, Glora, yeah. I, they're just adorable. I want to go, like, I want to go to the store. I want to go yeah. to Canada and I want to walk <laughs> in when they're recording and be like, can I like guest star on your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> like they are adorable. They and are. I love it. <laughs> well, you want to see what I got from them? Of course. Yeah. Local Yarn Shop Day 2022 nice pinks and purples and then like a blue mini mm -hmm. I got thankful I think this was last year's I think this is a 2020 or 2021 um but this like blues and brown I I am in love with two minis with a sock skein yeah this one is called sweater weather sweater weather, sweater weather. <laughs> love it I think I have that one too and 
Gorello. I I have that. <laughs> I was gonna say Julie's gonna steal it from you. I already have it. I don't know if you had it. <laughs> I really want um they have a bee's knees color, mm -hmm. their bee's knees color. I really want. Um, which is like, you know, they have it as like a like speckled variegated type of color and it's like yellows and pinks and like light browns and stuff. Um, then they also have it as a self striping. Mm -hmm. And do you see the sweaters mm -hmm. that they made? So they made the sock arm sweaters in like, you know, so the body of the color, the body of the sweater is a solid color. And then the arms are the self striping yarn. Yep. I almost bought it. I was like, this close <laughs> to buying it. Cause when, it was a kit. Yeah. So when Polka Dot Creek had this sale, it was, I can't even tell you how many things I had in my cart. <laughs> and I, I narrowed it down to four. Yeah. Um, it really, was very difficult. I but really I, want that. So if anybody, you know, needs to get me anything <laughs> in the future, I want the sock arm sweater with the bee's knees. <laughs> so I've been thinking that when it comes with the two minis like this, I'm sure there are a ton of other patterns other than socks that oh, yeah. there's enough yarn for. Oh, so yeah. I need yeah. to start looking into that. There's a little. like shawl patterns and stuff that you yeah. can do with socks that's like that. Or yeah. mittens and stuff like that with like different color cuffs. And... Yeah. 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 So I need to start doing stuff like that. But I also have to start doing like holiday knitting. So I have a lot. It's too to late do. to do holiday knitting. Just skip it. I need to. <laughs> I need to not have a job. And like you know. we've been so busy on the weekends and we've been doing so much driving. I just I, I don't have enough time to craft lately. And it's very, very sad. Yeah. All right, so we only have a couple minutes before Zoom is going to cut us off again. So I have a outlier craft too. So I've been working on an embroidery. Oh. Oh, let me take the thing off so you can see it. Sorry. The needle minder is in the way. So that's it. And Ready? it's a cozy blue pattern, who is I absolutely love. I used to do her monthly uh kits but then I just I couldn't keep up with the stitching so um this is for one of my friends she's having a housewarming and she's totally a walk in nature loves mushrooms kind of person so I thought this was perfect I made so so it's printed in color which kind of annoys me sometimes so from what I've actually stitched you can see I did some of the purple here I did all of these light green flowers or leaves around. I did a couple of the dandelions and like one and a half mushrooms. Um, and then I did two of these white ones. So I still have quite a lot to do. Oh, when I did this too, the moon phases, you're supposed to do it in like raised satin stitch, which I've never done before. So you're supposed to like outline it and then put like a bunch of little random running stitches in there. And then you fill it with a satin stitch but I, I hate satin stitch. I can't make it look nice. So, so I just did a whipped back stitch. Lemon Made Shop did a stitch along for like a quilt sampler yeah. um, that mom and I did. And she gave some instructions on how to do satin stitch. And I think it was raised like that. Yeah. And those instructions made it so much easier to do oh, satin really? stitch. Yeah. I don't, I don't dislike it as much now. I hate it. I, really, yeah, I just can't make it look nice. Like my yeah. edges always look jagged. I just can't make a nice smooth edge no matter what I do. She had some tips. I don't remember what they were, but yeah. she has everything archived on her um, Instagram. Yeah. So, so that's it. I'm, it's supposed to be done by Saturday. It's Thursday. It's not happening. You can do it. I have faith in you. I'm, I know I could, but I don't, I want to work on my, um, <laughs> on my Stephen West. So Sorry, friend, you're getting it late. And then I also <laughs> got her, I also got her this from there because she's she's totally hippy dippy and I love her. Um, they have these decal stickers and you put it on your window. So it's clear, it has a white backing on it, but it's clear and it's got like prisms. I'm sure you can't see it. Um, like rainbow prisms on there. Put it on your window and when the sun shines through the window, you get like this arc of, a, of rainbows all around the floor. Oh. So I was like, she's going to love waking up to rainbows in her, on her floor. So, so that's it. That's the end of my outlier crafts and we have a minute left. So it's time for okay. us to say goodbye. So thank you all for watching. 
Um, we'd love to have some comments below. We'd like to start interacting with everyone and getting to know everyone who watches our show and stuff. So um, leave us a comment. Let us know if you're participating in the Stephen West, if you've given up already, if <laughs> you're still sticking in there. We'd love to hear what everyone else is working on. So um, I guess we'll see you hopefully in two weeks. Happy, Happy netting. Happy